Hello, listeners. Welcome to my podcast show. This is your host, Isaiah Nenny, and this is the Game Time Gazette, where we're talking all sports, including Formula One, UFC, boxing, NBA, NFL, NHL, and more. Let's have some fun. Let's get ready. Good morning, people of the world. This is the Game Time Gazette. This is Isaiah Aneni. Welcome. Um, excited to jo- uh, excited uh, to have you here with me on another day. Um, yesterday wasn't too action packed with sports, but we still come on. We're gonna talk a little bit. I know I said I'm gonna come back on Wednesday, but hey, I miss you guys. And I know you know just trying to get um you know th- this episode out here because hey, what what else am I doing? I said, fuck. Let me just get on the pod and and talk. Let me just talk about the the games that happened last night. Alrighty, so we had a lot of NHL. We had a lot of, uh, like I said, a lot of NHL action. Had a little bit of, you know, European football. So we'll just get into the European football first because it was a little bit. So uh, last night we had, um, let's start with the EPL. You know, we talk EPL on this channel right here. Uh, we had Everton against Crystal, pa- Crystal Palace and ended 1-1. Um, Everton was able to, I mean, Crystal Palace was able to open up the scoring first. Jordan Ayu coming back from AFCON, uh, having a few, having a, having a good game, uh, scored a game, uh, scored a, a goal in the 66 minute. It was a banga goal as well. Uh, um, Amandu Anana was able to, was able to tie it up there late though for Everton and Everton right now needs all the points they need going into this. Um, after they got that point reduction, even though they've been playing well, they don't they, they're right there they're just outside the bottom three right um we've seen them with the point reduction they'd be they'd be around so they'd have 30 points so they'd be around they'd be around 12 they'd be safe they'd be safe right and i think they got two point reductions this year i'm not sure but they got point they got at least one right so um yeah it, it puts the it, it was it has put them in a bad position, so they need all the results they can get. So a tie, not really too bad. I, I mean, the only team that uh, really is putting any pressure on them right now is Luton Town with the same amount of points and a game back, and Luton Town is playing liver. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Everton will keep their 17th spot as Luton Town is versus Liverpool next. Probably not going to get a favorable result there. Let's move on to the games tomorrow. Yeah, since we're already talking about Lewin Town versus Liverpool. Um, Liverpool needs, uh, well, to keep pace in that first spot. Um, already four points above City. To keep pace in that first, um, they have a game ahead, though. So to keep pace in that first spot, they need to win tomorrow. And yeah, as I said, the are in Luton Town should come out banging, should get a good result, be able to get a win there. Three points for the Liverpool Never walk alone, Rangers. I know they're not Rangers, but you know they never they never walk alone. You know you know the saying in that. Um, yeah. Then you got City in Brentford. I, I'm popping out the the British accent when I'm talking <laughs> EPL. You're hearing this, you know. Uh, but yeah, we got City in Brentford. Um, again, another game that oh, the City in Brentford is today, not tomorrow, but it's a game that um, yeah, City needs to win after losing or. After getting a draw against Chelsea last time out, um, they need to be able to get a, a result here. Um, you know, we've seen, we've seen um, Liverpool. I mean, Man City have a good stretch of run these last few years. When it comes to the, when it comes to game time, when it comes to, you know, being able to clutch up at the end of the season. Where we've seen, we've seen Man City do that multiple times. This is the game that probably gets them level uh, with games with everybody else. Is their their game behind them? Brentford is a game behind. Bournemouth is a game behind. Luton's a game behind. But uh, this is the game that probably gets them level on the games uh, behind. Uh, so they're not behind anymore. Need to get a positive result there. Both Liverpool and Man City probably get a positive result in their next game. Uh, pressure is going to be kept at the top. Pressure is going to be kept at the top. Um, yeah, we'll talk about this more as we get uh, down the week. But going to be some good games today. Uh, 
Should hope for Man City win. Alrighty, let's get to the La Liga. Uh, we had Athletic Club against Girona. I mean, seeing uh, Bergerner, Romario, Romario. I can't say his, his middle name. <laughs> Alejandro, Alejandro Romario. Yeah, he had a brace. Uh, scored in the second minute. Opened up the scoring quick. And that surprised me as well. You know, for, for a team like Girona... Uh, obviously trying to keep pace with not real, uh, not only Real Madrid, but Barcelona's right behind them. Two points down, Barcelona is now on Girona. So they're going to be, I mean, I see Barcelona taking that second spot. I've said this multiple times here. Barcelona just eight points down from Madrid. Hey, we just need Madrid to drop a, a, a few games and, you know, be able to get into that, into that uh, race again there. You know, I mean... We, we we just need yeah i mean it all takes a little bit of luck obviously at this point in the season but seeing how last game last night's game against uh between athletic club and girona went seeing that i'm i'm, I'm you know a little bit of luck is always going to be involved i mean looking at that first goal you know ball fell right into alex bergen's lap, lap and i mean he put it straight down that left that left, you know, corner pocket right there. Keeper couldn't even get to it. That was a nice goal, you know. And uh, Girona doesn't make too many defensive mistakes as well. Alex Garcia, that whole back line has been pretty good this year as well, which is why they've been at the, you know, at the top three for majority of the year. Seen a, yeah, just defensive laps early in the game, uh, you know, able to tie it up later on in the game but you know even seeing like seven minutes seven minutes into the game you had uh Williams with a perfect opportunity I mean ball placed right into his lap into his lap and he missed it that was uh, that's not even a shot you're, you're meant to miss and and you know he got another opportunity again uh was able to not Inaki but his brother uh was able to turn it on not able to put it onto the back of the net. Entertaining goal uh, game in terms of goals, though. You know, looking at both of these teams, Athletic Club obviously needs all the results they can get. Just trying to get higher on the table. Um, but, you know, for, again, yeah, again, you're just looking at Girona and knowing Barcelona, the big bad wolf Barca is, is coming back. They're going to come back in two straight losses now uh, for Girona. Not how they want to be um, moving. Athletic club that that brings them a little bit closer to Real, uh, Atletico Madrid, just two points down from them. Trying to get that Champions League spot. Really having a great year uh, this year. Uh, that that Athletic club team. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Um, just seeing all of this, you know, for. For the um, the Liga race, you know, there's there's three games that I'm looking at for Real Madrid that are going to be very important if they're able to get positive results there, probably win the league. So April 21st is the last El Clasico, the next and last El Clasico of the season. Barca has to win that game, obviously, make them drop points. Looking at this Sunday against Sevilla, Sevilla's always been a, a a thorn in in the big three uh the big three sides in Madrid uh, Atletico Madrid and um Barcelona always do well always do well um even though Real Madrid has you know the you know kind of the head to head head to head advantage obviously they they would have having the better teams right that's a, that's a game that could give them fits. Got so, a real Sociedad against Real Madrid on April 28th. That's going to be a great game as well. That's going to be one of the other games that if we're looking at to see, okay, if, can they drop points too? Um, on, oof, just tough. There's not a lot of games. I mean, they drop points to Raya Vallecano, right? So it's it's possible that they can drop points to even a Salta Vigo. Could drop points to Athletic Club. And the Athletic Club is, is, yeah, March 31st, another game at Athletic Club. Against Real Madrid, that's one game. Yeah, they could definitely draw points. Athletic Club needing the points going into the, um, going into the uh, 
Champions League race and all of that. It's going to be interesting to see as the season goes on. We'll be obviously covering everything and more here on the Game Time Gazette. So stay tuned with me for La Liga, EPL. I, I took in that we didn't even talk any Bundesliga, uh, anything that happened this weekend. And there was a few, few very, 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 very. I mean, there was one very, 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 very surprising result in the Bundesliga this weekend. I mean, we're seeing Bayern eight points down level on games played with Bayern Leverkusen. Leverkusen is still undefeated in the season. Got Xabi Alonso going for like coach of the year, manager of the year for sure. I mean, he has turned Leverkusen into a wagon. Wagon. I think they're 30 something games unbeaten in all competitions. In the Bundesliga, 18 wins, four draws, zero losses. And one of those wins includes a win against Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich, a team that's been on the down low. Not the down low, I mean down slope. Tuchel. Tuchel and the boys aren't. They're not, they're not, they're not, um. They're not vibing right now. They're not, they're not, the synergy is not there. That man is not, the synergy is not there. It's not there between Tuchel and the boys, isn't it? I mean, had early goal from Musiala, 14. I, I mean, I seen a beautiful pass from Jamal Musiala to Harry Kane, which he skied in it. <laughs> Yo, I mean, uh, you just see all the, the abuse that Harry Kane is taking online, man. It's hilarious the way the people are talking about. You can leave Tottenham, but Tottenham will never leave you. And it's true, because what is going on? <laughs> Bayern's the wagon of wagons. I mean, even though I, I forgot as well, we didn't talk about Bayern against um, Napoli. We didn't, uh, against Inter Milan, sorry. We didn't talk about Bayern against Inter Milan, which was a, I mean, they lost. <laughs> they lost. A Bayern against Lazio. Why do I keep getting it wrong? All these Italians, uh, why, why they choose the wrong one? <laughs> but yeah, Bayern against Lazio. Um, Lazio winning one nothing there. I picked this game because... A Pumacano, he got a red card there that caused the penalty to to cause the game winning goal there. Even though not gonna blame him, not gonna I mean it was a bad tackle. And then this past Sunday against Bochum, getting that 77th minute red card, straight red. Well, not straight red, it was a two he he amounted two yellows. And he got, yeah, it was just a bad tackle. Another bad tackle. And then I'm seeing all the comments on why they're playing Opa, Man uh, Opa Meccano over the lit, you know. And then this, you're, you're looking at all the all the decisions that Tuchel has been making over the years and year, well, over, over the past year. And you're, you're wondering to yourself, why did they fire Julian Nagelsmann? Why did they let go of such a good coach? I mean, Bayern held the possession, 70 to 30% possession. They had the advantage on shots as well. 27 shots, 10 on target. This is against Bochum. But still lost 3-2. to two. Eight points down from Leverkusen. I mean, right now they're in the same position as a Barcelona is. Where they're, I mean, they're going to need some. They're going to need a team that hasn't lost all year to lose some games. They're going to need them to lose some games. And they haven't done it yet. I mean, obviously we're not expecting... Leverkusen to have an invincible season, a hey, props up to them, and it'd be phenomenal to see if they do. But we're obviously expecting them to lose some games, so it's going to be interesting to see how the Bundesliga is going to shake out as well. This was the uh, Bayern Munich's first loss in the round of 16 since I believe like 2011. It's been a long, long time 2011, 2012, something like that. It's been a long, 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 long time since Bayern has lost in the first leg of the of the of the round of sixteen. Um, they just they just dominate on it. But as the season goes on, what do we do? We're gonna talk about it here. I mean, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be a fun talk. 
going to be something that we're just going to have to continue watching, right? Uh, something else that I, I forgot to talk about in, in yesterday's pod as well, UFC 298, banger of a card, banger of a card. I really enjoyed UFC 298. Um, I started watching uh, just before the prelims ended, just before the prelims ended, and it was um, it was just a banger of a fight, banger of a fight. I mean, I mean, banger of a card, right? It, we, um, I seen uh, the Amanda Lemos versus Mackenzie Dern fight. That was a good one. You know, got went to decision though. Uh, you know, it, it could have been a little bit more. And then the the next one was the Marcos Rayogo the Lima versus Junior Tafa fight. That was that was a banger of a fight. Beautiful KO there in the second round. But I mean. The main thing that, you know, the most entertaining fights of the night, you know, for me were one, Marab Davishvili against uh, Henry Cejudo. Let's just spend a minute on Marab Davishvili. I mean, he was doing everything and anything to show that he will ragdoll anybody, especially Henry Cejudo, a former, um, a former bantamweight champion a former two division champion as well for henry he should have never really retired man now like looking at everything like man he won the two like he what the, the night he won that second belt should have never retired man because like coming back and you know and and then he's he's talking about um you know retiring and if he loses against marab and then, you know, Dana White not wanting to give um, Henry, the you know, the mic because it was Marab's night, which I totally understand as well, where it's like, yeah, you know, Marab is a new up-and-comer. He needs to cut his own promos too. He needs to call out, um, he needs to call out, you know, some fighters. He called out Sean, he called out Sean O'Malley, right? So those type of things that I look at and I'm like, okay, you know, like, I understand that. And Henry just, yeah, just the older fighter. He should have kept those titles though. He should have stayed a little fight. He should have, because he came back. He came back. So it's like, he should have stayed. Maybe, you know, just fought, lost. I mean, take the paydays and go home, you know? But now it's like, he's not going to get no more title shots no more. Might have to, if he is, he's going to have to work really hard for it. Like, go back to, you know, probably uh, top 10, you know, uh, you know, one of the, just work up against, uh, up on the rankings again. And show that, you know, deserves another shot. Because it's, it's definitely going to be a Marab or, you know, Sean. Uh, those guys are going to, you know, those guys are... Marab's, yeah, he, Marab is the, the, the number one contender, right? So he's going to... I mean, after after 299, Marab is going to be the number one contender. But there's just those guys ahead of him. And obviously, after that beatdown that Henry took, he has to prove himself again. But is he going to do that? Is he going to... He was talking about retiring if he loses. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's it's so it's so interesting, the world of fighting, right? And But let's talk about Marab a little bit, the winner, right? Marab coming in, and he's he's really been turning the UFC on its head, bro. I mean, he's on a – how many fight win streaks is this now? He's, he's killing it now. Like, he's really killing it now. We're seeing a, a new – a new uh, – just a new machine, a new mixed martial artist, like another, you know, uh, another big name potential mis- uh, MMA MMA fighter, right? And I guess that's the best way to put it. Like he's the machine. That's his nickname. I I, I tried I tried like incorporating his nickname in there, type of saying like a new machine or something. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like he's he's like he's a he's another you know person that's gonna get you know people to the seats and people come watching the fights. You got Aljamain Sterling still out there. Um, you know there Peter Yan. There's so many guys. Before Sahudo, yes, I, I'm, I keep talking about the Sahudo thing, you know. It's just it, it was so weird, so peculiar. Even him coming back, I was like, damn, they kind of just set him up for Marab. But is what it is. Marab, he's a monster, though. Machine is a accurate name. First round, it wasn't. Uh, it, first round went to Sahudo. Sahudo won that first round for sure because um, he was giving Marab those fits, being able to get um, you know around him and just 
give him fits, give him fits all night or, or the first round. But then in that second round, Marab just took over and he started ground and pound. I mean, he picked up Henry Cejudo. You know, I mean, he walked around the the he walked around the cage, dropped him, pound, 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 pound. It was phenomenal to see. I mean that 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 um, you know that that way of athleticism. I mean that guy's a tank. He's a machine. Um, the Ian Gary Jeff O'Neill fight. Everyone was talking about how that was boring, this and that. I didn't think it was boring. It's true. Jeff O'Neill, like, is uh, he was put up on a platter, uh, you know. <clears throat> Dana Dov obviously probably wanted in Gary to get a submission, get a, a a knockout on him, you know, kind of putting him up on a platter. Ian Gary's got kind of that next guy for sure in in that welterweight division. Um, he got the talent. He got the name. Even though people don't like him, he's going to get people to the seats because people are going to want to see him get punched, knocked out. And then if he does win, people are going to want to hit on his decision and want to see him get knocked out by the next guy. Right. So just things like that, like because they were saying like he was running around the cage all night, running around from Jeff O'Neill. And it's just it's being strategic as well. Jeff O'Neill, he had a great fight. You know, it's not even that Jeff was out there um, not fighting well. It was a split decision. It was a split decision. So, you know, got to give props to, to the fighter that, like, you know, these guys are all professional fighters, all great fighters. So, you know, I, I didn't see it as Ian Gary running around for the for the 15 minutes. I seen it as, you know, strategic. And he was able to get his, Latin, you know, get his shots and be able to get his angles, all of that, and be able to dominate the fight in his own way, right? Let's get to the main event. Alexander Volkanovsky against Ilya Taporia. Ilya Taporia called his shot all week. He was doing the Conor McGregor thing where he already wrote it in his bio. He's 15 and 0. He's going to be the uh, featherweight champion, new featherweight champion, this and that. He, at the press conference, he picked up the belt. He's like, hey, you know, he looked at Volk's face and he's like, hey, I'm the new chap. You know, he did the whole, he did the whole Conor thing. And then even after the fight, he was able to do the whole Conor thing. I mean, it was a great, it was a great fight. That first round, very competitive. And then that second round, that knockout came out of nowhere, man. I did not think Ilya Tapor I, I thought the round was gonna go higher than that, man. I thought it man, <laughs> when Ilya knocked him out, I'm like, what the fuck? I did not expect that. Alexander Volkanovsky, I, you know, he he he's been on the top of the mountain for so long. But MMA is one of those sports that like it's it stands alone to the fact that, like, you know, the giant will fall. Eventually, the giant will fall. He won't be at the mountaintop forever. There's going to be a young, a young lion, a young mountain lion to get the giant from the back or not even sneak up on him. Like, get him from the front. He's just so strong. Get him, you know, and that's what Ilya Taporia did to Alexander Volkanovsky. Alexander Volkanovsky was like on an 11 fight win streak in the welterweight in the featherweight division sorry and it was like the second longest win streak uh i think it was to max holloway's max holloway had a longer uh i think it was like 13 ever right so second longest ever in the featherweight division division Ilya taporia now probably gonna carry that on seven and oh in the ufc probably gonna go and carry that on it's gonna be interesting to see him fight man that guy's such an entertaining fighter he definitely got the knockout power as well it's gonna be interesting to see. I mean, and and he, he's talking about playing um, back in Madrid. I, that's the only thing that I don't like about Ilya, man. It, it, he's a Madrid fan, bro. It's a nasty, nasty, nasty thing of work to be a Madrid fan. Ugh. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was um, that was a great match. You know, congrats to Ilya Taporia. He's the new featherweight champion. I'm gonna be interested to see how his journey uh, pans out. We got UFC 299 coming up uh, on March 9th, you know, just in a few weeks. And that fight is, uh, you know, we were just talking about uh, Devashvili. The main event, Sean O'Malley against Marlon Vera. The only guy, Marlon Vera, the only guy to beat Sean O'Malley. And uh, by a mistake, by uh, by whatever you want to call it, he was the only guy to beat him. The only guy to beat him. So it's going to be interesting. That's going to be a great fight to see as the fight gets closer. We're going to talk about it for sure. Talk about the whole, the whole card. 
Got Dustin Poirier against Ben on St. Dennis in there as well. It's going to be a great fight, man. Going to be a great fight card. And then, you know, just prepping it up for UFC 299. I mean, before UFC 300. And then before I wanted to end off tonight, I wanted to talk about the wild game in the NHL last night. The Minnesota Wild versus the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, I turned that game off and that game was 5-3 after the second period. Minnesota Minnesota scored five goals in a span of five minutes and 12 seconds to start the third. <laughs> what are we even talking about? Like, what do you mean? Erickson Eck, a guy that got a hat trick in the game, said that it sounds like a Can- it sounds like a Canadian junior game with all those goals. You know, because it was first it was a Minnesota record for 10 goals in a game. It was um it was a record. For I feel like it was a record uh, between the span of the the because they scored six goals in or five goals in the in that span in the five goals in the span of five minutes. They broke multiple records, and not only uh, not only that, but also like being able to come back and you know win the game after being down five three, score ten goals, score seven in the third period. Crazy, bro. Kapriskov got a got a. Got a hat trick as well, which is was which is really impressive. Seeing that, and I mean, <sighs> Vancouver even scored on its first two shots of the game. That was a crazy game. I mean, you know, if we're talking about if we're talking about hockey and like what could like show hockey, this is obviously not a game that's going to happen on the frequency because look at all the look at all the records that the Wild said they set the team record for most in a game. Minnesota scored uh set a set the fourth fastest a team has scored six goals. They scored six goals in five minutes and forty five seconds. That's the fourth fastest a scheme a team has scored that many goals in NHL history. The uh, the Montreal Canadiens held the record with six goals in four minutes and twenty four seconds. Eric Sinek and Kaprizov each tied the wild record for points in a game. And Marley, uh, you know, and I mean, we're just seeing Erickson Eck and Kaprizov. They had each had twelve points. Kaprizov had four goals, eight assists. Bro, get out of here! <laughs> what are we talking about? Erickson Eck, seven goals and five assists. What are we talking about? That is crazy. Oh no, that's that's. I'm looking at the that's that's there during the five. There, this is during the five game. Uh, point streak. They each have twelve points during these uh five game point streak. They've gotten a point in five at least five straight games. All of those things, man, and just really impressive to see that. I mean, that's that's really a game to really prop up hockey, bro. That's that was such a beautiful game to watch. So entertaining from back to finish. You thought the game was over at the end of the second period. You come back in t- at the start of the third, and the game is tied. Ridiculous, man ridiculous not even the game is tied five minutes into the third period the wild have the lead (laughs) what are we even talking about that is a perfect game for hockey and that is the perfect game to end off the talk tonight i love talking with you guys here today you know i like we end off every day tell your loved ones you love them i hope god you know answers all your prayers all your wishes and all your requests be out there go be good people Go help out one person today. Go do one good deed and see how it comes back to you tenfold. Have a great day. Have a great week. You're going to have some fun. I'm going to have some fun. It's been your host, Isaiah Nenny. It's been the Game Time Gazette. Peace.